Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're gonna look at divide and conquer minimax algorithm finding the greatest and the smallest number in a given array. Uh, there are three methods to do this or depending on how you look at it. First method is to sort the array in and uh, find the first and the last element so that they can be either the minimum or the maximum. The next method is to iteratively check one after the other almost. Um, you go to each element, check if it's greater or smaller than the previous element and you move on. That is one method. And the third method is this one, divide and conquer minimax algorithm. Now believe it or not, this is a better complexity than both of those methods. So this is the one they probably use. I always uh, think sorting is always a better option because this is kind of confusing and sorting could be a better option too. Using a good sorting algorithm, which has, you know, low worst case complexity and yeah so let's get into the algorithm let's see how this program actually works the first thing we're gonna have is 82 36 uh, 49 91 blah 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 a bunch of elements in arrays and uh, the first step is to bifurcate so we are dividing and conquering so first our steps are to divide everything so let's divide it we divided them into five five each then we divided now this is a five length array so we need to bifurcate them into either three or two because you can't really do it as a half and half because it's an odd number an odd number doesn't have a half so obviously you're gonna do it like this so what we are looking for is we want to make them into the smallest possible binary combinations, uh, two uh, combinations of two. So here we got a combination of two and here we got a combination of two. We don't need to bifurcate them any further. So then what we're going to do is we're going to bifurcate this and we're going to bifurcate this into the, these two numbers and this one. So here there is no binary equivalent available. So we're going to keep them as what they are. But uh, just for com uh, simplicity and to deal with the program easier uh, in a pretty good way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them into similar structures of the same number. So they're going to be similar, but they're going to have a block of binary with them. Blocks we get are 8236 and uh, just what we just found over here, right? The, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So after bifurcating this array into a bunch of small pieces, you get this. Now, um, obviously, you won't expect to f anything to happen because this is the first one generated, second one generated, third one, using the recursive algorithm, of course. You'll see the program and you understand what's happening. Then you find the minimum and maximum between these two. So the maximum here is 92 and the minimum here is 55, both from these two are. So you're checking from here and here. Next, check from here and here. So here the maximum is 92. Yeah, it is still 92. And the minimum became 6 because 6 is the minimum over here. Then you have over here. Here the maximum is 92, still here 91, but that doesn't come close to it. And then 12. 12 is obviously greater than 6. Similarly, you go over here and the same thing happens. 92 is always the bigger one and 86 is the smaller one. So you can see over here that in these few comparisons, you actually found out what the minimum was and the maximum was instead of going to each element and iterating through the entire array. So that's how this program actually works. If you didn't understand this, I expect you or I, I hope you go through the you know, to start the program and see the presentation again because this is pretty awesome and yeah let's go on to the code now the code is pretty awesome too okay so guys uh, this is the code which we're gonna you know do right now so the first step is obviously to call the main function we're coding this in python so python requires a main function it doesn't require one but i like to have one so in our def main we have a bunch of stuff the first thing is i'm declaring an array which is a list in 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 python a list is an array an array is a list but a list is also expandable Okay, you can expand the list you can't do that for an array um, then you have length of 100 now you can control the length with the length function how many elements you want to print how many elements you want to input in the array uh, then you have for x in range of 0 comma length array to depend so I'm basically generating a, a random element based array so the array will have random elements from the from 0 to 100 um, and yeah that's how it then I'm going to print the array, uh, then I'm going to print the array and we're going to see what happens, okay? Then, you know, how many elements are there and whatever. Uh, let's start off with like 10 elements and then we'll move on to uh, bigger and better things. So then you have, um, but then you're basically calling the function, okay? Minimax array 0 dot length, comma length. So 0 is the starting position and length is the final position, uh, which is one greater than the last element, position of the last element, right? It starts from 0, ends at 9 but 10 is the length right so minimax array is zero length this is the function call and we're going to get to the function soon here we have a print max is str max uh, this is basically going to print uh, as a string the max value we'll get to that soon and then you have print min is str min and it's going to print the minimum value uh, after you get this so i'm 
min and max are basically global values which are declared over here these are min is 9999 I, I declared min as a, the highest possible number which could be achieved and max as the lowest possible number which could be achieved because then you'll see what happens I also have a, a, a few functions here define get larger in which if you pass a and b you get the larger of the two if b is greater than a return b else return a so get larger basically returns the larger of the two and get smaller basically returns the smaller of the two if b is smaller than a return b else return a okay even if they're equal they're going to return a right if b is equal to a what will happen is it will go into the else block default by default and return the same value right then let's get to the meat of the tutorial this is the min max algorithm the first two lines are housekeeping global min global max this is these are basically lines which are tell this block that i'm going to use min and max as global variables and not as local variables it's it's kind of you know mandatory in python to do that or it confuses itself between blocks so then you have if end minus start is equal, is greater than 2 which means that the length of the array is greater than 2 if the length of the array is greater than 2 you do this you call min max array start comma start plus end by 2 and array start plus end by 2 comma and so this is basically you can write here as mid I'm gonna copy this mid I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna say mid is equal to I'm gonna paste this and yeah this is the same thing as this so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it over here and yeah so basically a min max array start mid and this is the middle right? start plus end divided by 2 is the average of start and end so that's the middle right so I'm gonna call so what we're doing is we're dividing the first step is to divide right so we are dividing then we need to conquer the conquer part is down here so first we're dividing this into a mid mid and mid end so basically they're gonna be bifurcated as we saw in the then you have the else block in the else block we have um, a bunch of stuff that is the array is equal to array start uh, colon end so this basically says that if end minus start is not greater than 2 then it should be either equal to 2 or less than 2 in the else block so array start to end so basically this length length of this start comma or uh, start colon end is going to be 2 or 1 so if that is equal to 2 or 1 you're going to give the value to the array you remember what we did right we we if the length was 1 if n minus start was 1 we increase the size to 2 so this is what i'm doing here and array is basically overwritten here this value goes to this so the array value is overwritten as a whole but this is not the array value which you use over here this is obviously the one in the new block in python what happens is whenever you create a new object or a variable what it does is it creates a new memory space and a different pointer so this and this are completely different so don't confuse them even when you have assignment operators right if you are giving a to b and b equal to c even when you're doing that python creates new data variables or new data spaces to store those variables so then you have this basic this, this is kind of important what i'm doing here is max equal to get larger between max and get larger between the first and the last if array of zero is greater than array of one this whole position will be replaced by array of zero and then get larger of max and array of zero you get the point right get larger of max comma get larger so get larger this will be executed first and this position will be replaced by array of zero or array of one whichever is bigger and then get larger of max and get larger of zero so this value will be replaced by which one is max and that value will be given to max or the same thing get smaller will be given to min so the first step is to divide and the next step is to conquer so that's how this program works um, it's not that hard to understand it's pretty easy actually but the thing is that you should know how the recursion works and how to take advantage of recursion for your own personal gain be selfish while recursive operations are being done so uh, if you want to see how the complexities are calculated there's a link in the description to a page which will be very awesome so thanks for watching see you later guys